you know, I say this, <laughs> I'm 78, but if I didn't have AA, I'd probably sit in a rocking chair, looking out the window, jealous of everybody going by, and thinking that everybody has it made, and I, for some reason, was left out of the menu of how to live life. But there I am, jumped right in the middle, people calling me, telling me they love me, phoning me, asking me, as if I have something to say, and giving me the the promise that I won't regret the past or wish to shut the door on it, and to be myself, because I never knew who I was before AA. And I have this incredible life, and I'm so grateful, and I owe it all to AA, all of it. I heard it through the grapevine. Welcome. It's the AA Grapevine Half Hour Variety Hour, featuring the collected voices of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm Don, an alcoholic in Greensboro, North Carolina. You sure are. I mean, uh, hi, Don. Hey, everybody. I'm an alcoholic. My name is Sam, and I'm in Palm Springs, California. You don't need to brag. Where it's always sunny, <laughs> except for today when there's lots of clouds and drizzle. <laughs> Sam, I was talking with my delegate yesterday. Your delegate? The delegate. I wish y'all could see him bounce up when he does that. <laughs> Julie, well, it was a pleasure, but she had some ideas for the upcoming Grapevine app. The what? The Grapevine app. There's going to be a Grapevine app? It's going to be incredible. You'll be able to download it on your phone and you'll get the magazine. And a lot of other features, like there's going to be a sobriety calculator, a little thing called the AA Grapevine podcast will be actually on the phone. It's going to be a cool thing, too, because all of the Grapevine articles are already available to listen to. Mm -hmm. But within the app, you'll just be able to say, play it, and it will just play article after article, and you'll be able to curate your own playlist of articles that are favorites. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. So she had some ideas and I'm going to throw them to you. And then I've got a couple of ideas and we'll mm. see if this generates anything. Maybe we can put a bug in the ear of the developer of the app. Yeah, we really don't want to deal with bugs and apps. Okay. We okay. don't want bugs. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. All right. So this is her best idea, I think, to have a game inside of the app. Stump the Thumpers! That would be fantastic to put the <laughs> Stump the Thumpers game in there. No, she said have a jaywalking game. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Frogger from the 80s. <laughs> Except instead of a frog, it'll be Bill W. <laughs> Maybe it'll be Victor E. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's fantastic. And it needs to be an, a little Easter egg. There needs to be a special way that you get to it. It's not obvious. <laughs> <laughs> a secret, yes. But I figured they could do it so that you could play it in sober mode or drunk mode. <laughs> serpentine, <laughs> serpentine. <laughs> oh my gosh. If it's in drunk mode, uh, the, everything's wobbly. You can't really control it at all. You know? Well, I mean, so I'm talking serpentine, serpentine, because back in my drinking days, a drinking buddy said, that's how you walk a straight line when you're drunk. You try to serpentine and you'll get the straight line. And you'll go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then she said, this is great to have a ask your sponsor app where the, the app always just gives one answer and it'll be your voice saying, do you think that's wise? <laughs> that sounds like sponsor schmonser. Yeah, that was, that was an app that we had on the Boil Down, our previous podcast. <laughs> to thine own self be true <laughs> yeah, that was the other one yes. <laughs> and she thought it would be really good to have a social media aspect to it Ooh. I, I don't know because of the anonymity problem and also well i mean yes we're alcoholics so we're supposed to behave well i mean we're sober alcoholics so we're supposed to behave well but I don't think that we always do. Yeah, I, I don't think the, the social app aspect of it's going to happen there. But, you know, you never know. Well, what about this? A hashtag heard in the meeting area where you could put in things that you heard in meetings and do it anonymously. 
Oh, to submit to the podcast or something. Well, yeah, and it'd just be interesting to hear all the things that people hear in meetings that strike them. And okay, I got one more here. Before and after selfie. <laughs> you would load in the worst photograph of yourself back when you were drinking, and we all have them somewhere. You put that in, and you have then and now, and you, <laughs> you can click. So you'll always remember what you're working for in AA, because this is what you used to look like. Well, you know, there is going to be a situation where there are people who won't have before pictures. So mm -hmm. we can also include a filter where you can take a current photo and <laughs> drunkify it. Yeah, you drunkify for your before. Gosh. Well, with those grand ideas, anything that I could come up with is going to be something along the lines of a really bad wits end joke wits end jokes are good in fact julie mentioned that i forgot it oh. <laughs> we'll see i'm excited about this app if you folks at home have any kinds of ideas about the grapevine app send them to us in a voicemail a voicemail or telephone call or an email all the ways to reach us are at aagrapevine.org slash podcast and we would love to hear from you Speaking of wits in, Don, how did today's guest come to be? Oh, yes. Our guest today is sent a joke in to wits end, and it's already aired. Today's guest is Val M. from Vancouver, British Columbia, and she did call in a joke to wits end, and it just really worked for you. <laughs> I liked her voice so much. Well, let's hear the dulcet tones of Val. Hey, Don, how can I support the Grapevine podcast? Since the Grapevine is self-supporting, we don't sell ad space in our magazines, on our website, or even on our podcast. Grapevine doesn't even accept contributions from AA members. What? If you want to support the podcast, visit aagrapevine.org and click on store. Hi everyone, my name is Val M and I'm an alcoholic. My sobriety date is July 2nd, 1980. My home group is Kitson, which means Kitsilano Sunday, but Kitson online now. And I have a sponsor who I love and I sponsor people, women. And I did have a man sponsee once, but he passed away. Not because of me, he was sober. <laughs> That's good. That's good. What's your home group again? Kitson, K-I-T-S-U-N. And what does it stand for? Kitsilano Sunday morning. Kitsilano Sunday. And Ah, uh, gotcha. That's a place name. It is. It, yeah. Yes. It's a like a section in Vancouver. I see. I'm grateful to be a member there. It's a great, great meeting. Tell us a little bit about the meeting and what type of format does it have? Well, we really just share experience, strength, and hope. Mm -hmm. But now we're two factions. There is the people who went back into the meeting. So I'm an onliner actually now. I wanted to go back into person, but I have some health issues. And my husband had a stroke and now he has cancer. So I didn't want to perhaps pick up something and take it to him. However, that being said, when I registered for the International Women's Conference in Dallas, Last year, I had registered. I truly thought that it would be over by now, COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And off I went. I had a ball. I don't think there were many people who sang deep in the heart of Texas, clap, 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 louder than me. I had so much fun. <laughs> really? Oh, I would tell you. I danced. I laughed. I listened to phenomenal speakers. Fantastic time with almost 3,000 women, 2,997. Oh, wow. It's a good sale. You see, 3000 but for you, 2997 <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that rigorous honesty. Right. But I came home with COVID. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, it was worth it. By the grace of God, my darling husband didn't get sick. So oh, that's there's the miracle. 
you're a prime example of how online meetings are so important. Yeah. Because even though meetings are opening up back in person, there's a place for online meetings. Well, it provides greater accessibility. Online meetings are an option, and it just further expands that footprint that allows people to find our solution. Well, for example, last year I went to the IWC online, mm -hmm. and when they had the countdown of women, it was phenomenal. We had women who were online with 60, 50, 40, 30 years, some of them so infirm that they couldn't go in person. So, you know, there is a need. Yeah. And I have a brother, actually, who has MS, and it's very severe now. What would he do? He's 40 years sober, and he would he can't get even out of bed. He's, you know, without a hoist. So how could he get to a meeting if it wasn't online? And I know I have friends who can't stand online and they don't get the same thing. It's true. It's not like collecting hugs at the door and, and that, that intimacy. But you know what? There's an intimacy that I get. For instance, this morning at my home group, which is 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, we had sharings that were so incredible from somebody with seven days to somebody with 43 years. You know, yes. one woman had had a stroke recently and she's in assisted living and she was sharing her experience and somebody else you know with seven days was sharing his his joy at being able to come to a meeting so you're right every meeting is very important that we go to it's the ones we don't go to that you know we forget what happens when we don't go to meetings right yeah, absolutely. We never know what's going on at the meetings that we don't go to, do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, Fal, what got you to go to a meeting in the 1980, you said, yes? Yes. Well, hmm. I was drinking, out of control drinking. But if you had asked me, I would have said, nothing wrong with me. Everything's okay. But my father, who I didn't really have any use for, because he was a terrible, raging, violent alcoholic, came to be my Ebby Thatcher. And dad moved, came from Vancouver to Montreal, and he took me to two meetings. My family were worried about me, and my father decided to come. And I didn't really even want to see my dad, but I was an AMA people policer. Not so bad now, but I was really bad those days. So I picked dad up. And the first thing he wanted to do was go to a meeting. He knew where they were. I took him to it and he was asked to share. Now, if he had said to me, go to meetings, we're worried about you, blah, 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 blah. I would have just thought to myself, oh, go away. You know, I don't want to hear you. But I listened because they nabbed him as he walked into the meeting. They nabbed him to speak. And something in his share touched me. And I knew that my father, with three years of sobriety at that time, had changed. I knew it. I could just feel it. It's like the language of the heart. My heart was very touched. So I didn't see him for the rest of his week that, that he had in Montreal. And then when he was leaving, we went to the last meeting he took me to, which was became my Montreal home group for 19 years. Anyway, the people there were so nice and the, so wonderful and loving. And I just felt enfolded in Montreal love, AA love. And he gave me a 12 and 12, you know, when this man, Don, late Don T, when he gave it to me, I thought, I don't want this, you know, please, I don't want that. But Don said, oh, well, you know, the group gives them to people who come. So I took it because if, if I had thought it was from my father, I wouldn't have wanted it. I would have said, no, thank you. Mm. But because it was from the Loyola group, I said, OK, well, three months later, guess what happened? My sobriety date is July the 1st. You have a July the 4th. Canadians have July the 1st. That's our Canada Day. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to a Canada Day party. So guess when my sobriety date is? July the 2nd. Second. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got to AA. So you were introduced with those two meetings. Yes, by my dad. What happened inside of AA that turned you around? What didn't happen? I fell in love with AA. What can I say? My home group, the people at Loyola were so good. They were so kind to me. 
They told jokes. I hadn't heard jokes for a long time. They just enfolded me in love. And then they got me greeting at Loyola. And I was a shoe person because I could not look at anybody in the face. So I would look down and shake your hand. And then this woman who stood with me, bless her heart, she's gone now too. She said, nudge, nudge, Val, look in their face and ask them how they are. So I did. <laughs> and after a while, I was able to look. I got to get to know people. And I was told to go to lots of meetings and get a sponsor, which I did. And go to one meeting of AA that would be a step group and one meeting, a big book study every week. So that's what I did. Life changed for the better. It was really wonderful. It was in going to the meetings. But what was going on inside? Where was a place that you were fighting against it and then surrendered and found, oh, this thing really works? I was given the grace from July 2nd until today that I haven't wanted or taken a drink. That in itself was a miracle because I didn't have tools to, when life was good, I would want to drink. When life was bad, oh gosh, I, I don't want to know. So down, 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 a drink. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I, I would pray and, and, and ask, you know, God, give me the strength to get through the day and to not have a drink today. And somehow it happened. And then, I don't know, people were so nice. First, it was fear. But somebody said to me, face everything and recover. And somebody said, forgetting everything is all right. And there were a whole bunch of other ones that, mm -hmm. you know, that I heard. <laughs> but I did what I was told. And the only place really that I felt comfortable for so long was in a meeting. Mm -hmm. When I was drinking, I would go to work. And so I'd say, okay, it'll, I'll be okay till lunchtime. Okay. Okay. I leave at five. Okay. Five, by five o'clock, I'll be okay. And then it was drinking. Mm -hmm. So when I got sober, I'd say, okay, and women would phone me and I'd say, okay, I can make it to my break because I worked in a stressful environment and then I would make it to lunchtime. Then I would make it to my break and I would phone people in AA or they would phone me. And then after work, I would go to a meeting every single night, sometimes two on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I'd go to three and that we had fun too. I've got to say that we had fun. There's this one guy dawn but he we'd go to this meeting on a saturday afternoon and he'd say let's go to plattsburgh so we'd all pile in his car well we'd be four and <laughs> off we'd go cross the border into the states into new york and we'd go to plattsburgh and we'd go to dinner in plattsburgh and then we'd go to the meeting at eight o'clock and then we'd go to friendlies afterwards and we'd drive home and we just had fun or Friday night, we go up to St. Agath in the Laurentian Mountains to the St. Agath meeting. And I began to have fun, which I hadn't had for so long, and to get out of the prison that I made for myself mm. before AA. Val, where did the fellowship or the program or both show up and you did not expect it? <laughs> I can tell you one that really changed my life, actually. I came into AA with a faith, but it was nothing like the faith I have today. So I was five years sober. I was going to meetings. I was doing everything that I felt that, that I should be doing. But a whole bunch of life incidents has happened. And I thought, God, I'm doing everything you want. I, I don't understand it. So where does a good Canadian go that lives in Montreal uh, when life isn't seeming to work the way they want it? I was going to Plattsburgh at five years sober to get drunk. And so I get to the shopping center there and off in the distance, the far end of the shopping center is the liquor store. So I start off going to the liquor store and I ran into two members and their daughter. So I got rid of them by, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everything's good. Goodbye. Goodbye. Go a little further. I ran into John Mack and Lorraine. I got rid of them. Oh, my goodness me. I'm making a beeline for the liquor store now. Nothing's going to stop me. And who comes right in my face? June and Mike. Hi, Val. What are you doing in Plattsburgh today? Well, by this time, <laughs> I surrendered. I give up. I give up. I, give up. <laughs> I started to cry. I told them the sob story. They put their arms around me. They said, you're coming with us. I spent the afternoon with them. We went for dinner. We went to the meeting at eight o'clock in Plattsburgh. We went to Friendly's. And when I drove home, I did not want to drink. 
And I think that was what touched me the most was that God really wanted me to be sober, that I was actually a human being on this earth. I wasn't some lower than the door, closed, sneaking, you know, going under that I, because I didn't have any self-esteem. And I remember just before that incident, I was at a big book study and I shared something. And a man there said to me, you know, Val, I've known you for five years and I've never heard you say one good thing about yourself. And I said, that's not true. I do, I do. But you know what the truth was? I didn't. And that clinched it for me that day, that Saturday in Plattsburgh, that God wanted me to be sober and that I had a right to be on this earth and I had a right to live and have a good life. And it turned around for me in, in wonderful ways. It keeps doing that today as well. I got an AA attitude. Oh my gosh, what a story. Mm. I am lifted up, but I have a question, and this is crucially important. What is Friendly's? <laughs> <laughs> it's a restaurant that serves all kinds of food, but we all went for ice cream after the meeting. Mm -hmm. So you're so now you're sober for a long time, and you are faced with great obstacles in your life at this point. You just had COVID, and your husband's sick. How are you staying sober today? How are you dealing with life? You sound like you have a well of uh, resilience in you, even though all this stuff is going wrong in your life right now. Gosh, well, God is everything or God is nothing. What was my choice to be? I could go around and I could be miserable and, you know, you could play the violin about the sad life I have, or... You can look at it and say, you know what? This is life on life's terms, kid. What are you going to do? And so I wake up in the morning and I pray before I get out of bed. Well, most mornings, sometimes you know what it's like when you're almost 80. <laughs> and I have some readings that I do, the 24 hours and the daily reflections. And I, I also read Alan on literature, uh, the daily ODAT. And I also like Hope for Today. It's a beautiful book. This is for Alateens, actually, but it applies to everyone. Anyway, I do that, and then I write. I write a gratitude list, and I write about things that are going to happen for the day. I ask God every day for the strength to get me through it, like the third and the seventh step prayer, and to be God's instrument and the best person I can be every day. And, uh, you know, I fall short. I mean, let's face it. The halo doesn't have far to fall. Uh, <laughs> and as I say to my sponsees who aren't married or anything, I say, you know, it's easy to be a swan when there's no one to ruffle your feathers. So every day. <laughs> true, right? That's great. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, like when I'm reading my mystery book or if I'm doing something and, you know, somebody calls or Brian needs something. I, you know, I used to bristle. Mm -hmm. But I ask God to help me with self-restraint and to remember why I'm here. And the miracle of why I'm here is not for my life. I gave it to God every morning, and I still do. And then, you know, I try to find something to laugh about and to be happy about. And I just love a woman. She's in L.A. You may know her, Marilyn S. She said, and I may get it wrong, but she said, if you're sober today, just sober, you get a C. But if you're sober and you help somebody, you get a B. But if you're sober and you help someone and you laugh a lot, you get an A. So I I, I strive for an A every day. Oh, that is fantastic. You got a bad joke for us? A bad one? Or a really good one. <laughs> oh, look at that grin. <laughs> okay. There was these three couples and they did everything together. You never saw one couple without the other. They were close with anything. So they were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary, and they decided that they were going to go to Europe. Well, of course, they're in the plane, and as they're crossing over, the plane crashes. And they end up in front of St. Peter. So he points to the first one, come here. He looks at the couple, and he says, okay, I'm looking at your file here. He looks at the man. Money, money, money. He said, all you ever think about is money. He said, you're so money crazy, you even married a woman named Penny. Down you go. So he looks at the second one. Come here. So they get in front of him. He said, ugh, drink, drink, drink. All you ever think about is drinking. He said, 
You're such a drunk, you even married somebody named Brandy. Down you go. So then he comes to the third. And the couple sitting there and the guy looks at his wife and he says, okay, Fanny, let's get out of here right now. (laughs) Don might fall out of his chair over there. (laughs) That's perfect. Val, we've got a segment that we do sometimes call the daily quote, and we use a daily quote from the AA Grapevine. So you can subscribe to receive a daily quote email at aagrapevine.org. I don't just hear the slogans anymore. I feel them when I speak them. They take hold of me. They change the course of my day if I let them. That's Fairhaven, Massachusetts, November 2002, living the slogans into action. I love it. I love live and let live. I love let go and let God. I love but for the grace of God. When something happens, it's easy for me to get into a stew about something. And then I think easy does it, Val. Just take it easy, take a breath, calm down. They say that the longer you're sober, the more time you have for that self-restraint before you respond or the first thing that comes into my head, I don't have to say anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah, it is. Because for me, boy, open mouth, place (laughs) in foot. You know how that goes. (laughs) I was very good at that. You know, I hated the slogans when I first came in. I thought that they were saccharine, Mm. obvious things for weak minds to repeat, to give themselves some sort of strength. Are you reliving this right now, Don? I was a little bit judgmental. Tacky little red, white, and black things. Yes. <laughs> like everything should be on a doily or everything should be <laughs> hand-stitched onto a pillow. that you place on your bed when you went to sleep at night so you could get your thoughts in order. And then I discovered one day at a time, I can't live any other way. All I have is this moment. It's a principle to live by. And I had such contempt for it. Well, how important is it? Yeah, easy does it. We, You know, I got one of those bumper stickers and put it on my truck so that I would see it every day. That's right. I'm supposed to be letting go here. (laughs) Or, you know, you're driving along and the car in front of you says, live and let live or some slogan of AA. And you think, I'm not alone. Yes, I don't have to run this person off the road. (laughs) I knew something was coming. (laughs) Oh, Don. But Sam, do you have a slogan? You know, it takes time and time takes time. I can't make me change right now. I have to let me be changed. Things I must earn. That was beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Sam. It's not the time, so I have to let it be. This has been great, Val. Thanks so much for being here. I'm honored that you asked me. I'm really touched, and thank you so much. You know, I'm not a circuit speaker or anything. I'm this little alcoholic in Vancouver trying to get through a day. (laughs) That's going to change soon. It's just for your jokes. I am from Santa Clarita, California. My sobriety date is November 5th, 2018, and I have a home group, which is the Women's Bean Bag Toss at 6.15. We toss a cute little beanie baby to each other, and um, I just wanted to thank the Grapevine podcast for having a podcast available in 2023. I listen to you guys every morning um, on Monday when I drive to work, and I have about a 20-minute drive. So you guys get me through Monday, Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday, and it helps get my mind right and remind me of the beauty of our program and the spiritual principles before I walk into work. Uh, My professional life has definitely challenged my emotional sobriety, and I'm so grateful you guys are here you know, I get to laugh, I get to get those mm-hmms where I identify, and 
I am so grateful for that. I just got my new grapevine um, about our anniversary for 12 and 12. I hope you guys enjoy the weekend ahead. It's Memorial Day weekend, and I will not be drunk. God bless America. Take care and talk with you soon. Bye. Sam, toss me the beanie baby. Got it. Thanks for calling, Carissa. Memorial Day is my anniversary, so I'm going to be sober, too. God bless America! <laughs> Don, the world is definitely a better place with the two of you sober. And, uh, hey, Carissa, watch your email. We're going to be reaching out to you because we want to get you on the show. She's so enthusiastic. She's awesome. we got to have her. December is a great time of year to reach out to alcoholics and help others. What are the ways you stay sane and grateful during the holidays and New Year's? Do you actually stay sane, Don? <laughs> That's a good question. How do you navigate holiday parties and family gatherings? Share your best sober holiday stories at aagrapevine.org slash share. Stories are due by June 15, 2023. Our guest today, Val, says there once was an ice fishing drunk. He loves to ice fish. Ice fishing, his life, he just loved it. So he's drinking away Saturday night. He decided that he was going to go ice fishing. He gets his gear. He puts it in the truck, drives, drives, drives away. He gets finally there and he's chip, chip, chipping, chipping at the ice. And he hears this voice. You won't find any fish around here. So he gets his flashlight, he looks around and he sees these legs and he looks up and he says, who are you? I'm the manager of the ice rink. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that funny. Thanks for joining us. The AA Grapevine Half Hour Variety Hour is posted every Monday and is produced by AA Grapevine, Inc., we don't speak for AA as a whole. We share the experience, strength, and hope of members to help others recover from alcoholism. Podcast info, including how to call in, is at aagrapevine.org slash podcast. Find AA Grapevine on Instagram and the AA Grapevine channel on YouTube. All things Grapevine are available at aagrapevine.org. If you want to know more about AA, Google Alcoholics Anonymous and your city or visit aa.org.